I am Stacy Watson. I am the partner in charge of our state and local tax group at Lutz & Company. I have been doing state taxes for a long time. I used to give the number, but now people can figure out my age. And the older I get, the less I want you to be able to figure that out. So we'll just suffice it to say for a long time. Scott did tell you to get up and move around because state taxes, especially incentives and credits, can be somewhat boring. So if you need to stand up so you don't fall asleep during my presentation, feel free. We're going to start. We focused on Nebraska and Iowa just based because of where we are. And clearly many states offer credits and incentives, um, but I'll start with Nebraska. We, we have one major incentive program in Nebraska, and what you're gonna notice between Nebraska and then when I move into Iowa is that Nebraska's are a lot more restrictive and statutorily driven and really overruled by the Department of Revenue, where in, um, Iowa uses a lot of the Department of Economic Development to look over their credit. So you're really gonna see a big difference in the credit. Nebraska's biggest credit program is the Nebraska Advantage program. It's really designed to reward companies that grow and expand in Nebraska or move here. This replaced, I don't know if any of you remember LB775, but this replaced the old credit program, LB775. They came up with this, we refer to it as LB312. You get income tax credits, and they can be passed out to shareholders, so if you're a pass through entity, they can come out to you and you be used individually. You can get sales and use tax credits, and you can get some property tax exemptions if you grow large, but you have to be really, really big to get there. So, but Nebraska was pretty, they defined certain business types. So they only want to reward certain businesses, so they chose what I quote unquote deemed who are gonna be the winners in the state when they put together this incentive package. So it's not everybody. You have to be a certain type of business. But what's very important in Nebraska is that if you think you're going to grow or you think you're going to expand, they require an application up front. So let's say you get to the end of your fiscal year and your accountant says, gosh, you did really good. You hired five new people. You have $500,000 in new investment. And you think, great, can I use this credit? No. You have to apply before any of that happens. So if you don't apply for that before it happens, you don't get any of the credit. And Nebraska also said, you have to pay me an application fee because someone has to look through all this. So it ranges from $1,000 to $10,000, depending on the tier level. Most application fees with the state range between 1,000 and 1,500. But if you do think you're going to do it, and you are one of the qualifying businesses I'm gonna show you, it's usually worth it. The minimum credits you'll receive back from the state are about 250,000, up into the millions of dollars, depending on which level you're at. So $1,000 seems a lot up front, especially to smaller businesses, but at the end of the day, it can be worth it. Yes. Yep. Yep, I'll get there when I talk about investment, but those count as well. These are the tiers that Nebraska set up. So they said if you can invest a million dollars in your business and 10 new jobs over a five year period, so you have five years to do that. So again, that application date's very important. You have five years to do that. We'll give you credits for that. Those credits are about 250,000. The larger ones fall into the $3 million and 30 new employees. Um, if you hit that tier over seven years, they give you about $750,000 in tax credits over that seven year period. And then the other tiers, we don't see very much. These, <laughs> every time they add a tier, just so you know, it's usually for a specific business coming to Omaha. Tier six was for Yahoo. Um, you know, so we always give the tiers a specific name based on who asked for it. So if they want a new business to be a winner, because otherwise we only have certain type of businesses, the legislature, the legislature would add a tier. These are who, who qualifies, who am I, who qualifies. Manufacturers always, research and development, um, exportable services, so software design. And what they really want you to be doing is serving 75% or more of your customers outside of the state of Nebraska. So if you're doing all local work, they don't reward that. Um, then smaller industries, so those are tier one. You notice they don't give the same advantages for every single tier. So some tiers, you can have administrative headquarters in tier three. That means you have to meet three million and 30 new jobs, but you don't qualify under tier one, which is the smaller, you know, one million and 10 new jobs. So they're pretty specific about where you have to be um, in these areas. Now, just because you see um, distribution and warehousing up there doesn't necessarily, it doesn't call to mind everything you think of. Originally, data centers weren't a specific tier on there. It just said, uh, call centers and telecommunications. One of our clients did a data center project. 
we argued with the state and we won that they fell into the telecommunications area and then the state just added them anyway. But just because you see something up there that maybe you think doesn't define you, doesn't mean we can't try and fit you into one of these areas. So it is something to look at beyond the definition of just the word that's out there. Oh, the other thing is, is if you're serving one of these industries, so let's say you create software for banking entities or financial institutions or insurance companies and that's what you do, you can qualify if 20% of your business is for one of these entities. If you provide a service or a product for one of these entities, you may qualify as well. Yeah? Does the investment have to come all in one year, or does it happen over that five It happens over that period. So um, you have this per tier, you have that many number of years to accumulate your jobs and accumulate your investments. And once you get there, so let's say in year three you're there, then you start a new seven year period of accumulating the credits or a new five year period of accumulating the credits. Do you have to apply before you spend a single dollar? Yes, if you wanted to qualify. I mean, so if you decide you wanted to apply today, anything you spent today forward would qualify. I'm sorry. Yes, sir. Do you have to apply before you spend a single dollar? For any dollar to count, your application date has to be before you spend that dollar. Of investment. Of investment. Jobs technically go to the last year. Okay, and you can solicit investment? You can. Before application. Before application, just as long as it's not spent and you haven't bought anything that would go on a, like a general depreciation schedule, so an actual tangible asset or lease space or something like that. So you can have money come in the door, you just can't spend it on anything yet. It's not, it's not based on capital raise. No. It's based on money spent. That will count in the angel investment program. That's a different credit that we'll get to. That you have to, when you do the angel investment program, you have to apply for that before you raise capital for it to count for that program. But this program, it's based on dollars spent. Software is a very gray area because either you have to actually license the software. So most. Most programming doesn't qualify. What I think of as a typical software programmer, I, I go out to a Union Pacific and I sit at their desk and, I, and I'm their IT person and I change their programs, unless you're doing it for out-of-state people. You know, if you're only doing it in-state, no. If I can develop a program that I sell, yes, that would qualify that I license. But software, software gets iffy based on where you do it and what you're actually doing. But, if all you have are programmers and you don't actually sell programs to people, I mean, if I develop web apps and stuff like that that I physically sell to a client, then that counts. But if I'm just going out to be the rent of an IT guy, that doesn't count unless you're doing it out of state. What if you develop your own website? As long as you have enough customers out of state. They, they're looking at you providing that service to out of state customers. Now, if I develop my own websites and all I sell them is to the banking and financing industry, or 20%, then I might qualify. Yes, sir. If I had a business in Iowa that I wanted to move it over here, can I apply here, then move it over here and qualify for the... Uh, yes. Uh, you just can't move intrastate. You can move interstate. That's what they want, right? I mean, we want businesses to leap and come from a different state and come here. So, yes, you would qualify, or vice versa, if you decided you wanted to move over to Iowa, you, but you can't move intrastate. So, I can't take a business from Omaha, move it to Lincoln, and have that qualify. Yes, sir. Yes, so we'll skip ahead a little bit. Um, the worst part of this credit in Nebraska is actually the uh, proctology exam you receive from the Nebraska Department of Revenue <laughs> when you have completed your project. You are guaranteed an office visit and they review every single record to every single penny. It's not a very taxpayer friendly credit and we really try to explain that to our clients up front because otherwise you're very unhappy when you come in. So from day one, of applying for this program, every single thing you buy that's an asset better go into a binder and just put it in there and keep it in there and make sure, you know, so that every, because if it takes you seven years to get there, you have to have seven years worth of asset documentation. That's a lot of paperwork and most people don't keep their records for seven years. The employment's even worse because you have to have a certain wage base. So you have to be paying people X number of dollars per hour. Um, so you have to know when they started, did you let them go? How much was I paying them per hour each year? Did that increase? And you have to keep all those wage and employment records. So if you use a service like ADP or Paychex or something like that, 
keep the reports. If you're doing it internally, make sure you're printing reports out of your system. Um, you guys are probably much more technically advanced than that, so if you're not keeping a binder, keep it in some off-site cloud storage space, right? But make sure that you have access to those seven years worth of records for both employment and investment. And they will audit every piece of information that they need to to determine that the credit's correct. They will, basically what they'll do is they'll audit this credit and they'll say, oh, well, since we're here anyway, we're going to look at all your sales and use tax, we're going to look at your income tax, and we're going to look at your withholding tax. I mean, we're here. So we might as well just help you out and go through that as a taxpayer education process. That's what they call it. So it's not very friendly and it's not very fun. And so we warn everybody up front that they need to keep that type of documentation. Nebraska is very strict about it. On the other hand, you will find that Iowa is not. It's, oh, I, I think I got 30 employees. Okay, great. Um, Iowa kind of got bit by that a few years ago when they had a film in industry credit and they handed it out like it was water. And then all of a sudden, someone, somebody did you know, some sort of documentary research and they proved that none of these places really existed. So Iowa's gotten a little bit stricter, but they really don't give you the exam Nebraska does. Nebraska will examine every piece of documentation related to this credit. And you can't actually use any of the monies until that examination is complete. So. Nothing. You don't get any money until I, I get there. So you don't owe anything back. But let's say I get three years in, they give me $200,000, so I'm two years down the road of actually, that's my entitlement period is now when I'm earning credits, and I decide I have to lay off half the jobs, then I do owe money back to the state. So, but until you actually reach the levels, you get nothing, and then you have to maintain those levels for five to seven years, or you have to give some money back. So. Um, this is basically what you can get the credits on, so 10% of my investment. So and that's stuff you'd see on your depreciation schedule or any big assets that you purchase, and leases. So this includes leases of a new building, of a copy machine, it includes anything you lease. So if you are thinking about doing this credit, there are ways to structure a lease to get you the maximum amount of credit, the soonest or when you want it. So if you are thinking about using a credit, if you think you're a qualified business and you think you can hit those levels, you wanna make sure you structure your lease in the best way possible. So you wanna ask before you sign that documentation. Um, you get 10% of the comp that you pay over your base year. So assets are from the moment I say I wanna be in the program, so day one, forward. Your employment though, you get to look back at your last calendar year. So if I apply in 2013, I get to look at my employment level in 2012 to see how many I'm gonna increase. So if in 2012 I had zero employees, my increase is whatever I hire over the next five years. If I had 10 employees, et cetera. So it, it's not, they don't look at headcount, it's full-time equivalent, and a full-time equivalent is 2,080 hours. So they actually calculate the number of hours you pay someone. So their calculations are pretty detailed. So if you have part-time workers, they count, just as a part-time person. If you have people that work a lot of overtime that you don't salary, those count as more than one person. So there are ways to structure the compensation credit as well. So if you know you can hire people and not have to pay them a salary and they're gonna work more than 2,080 hours, you may want to do that so you have a higher employee count. Um, again, I told you there has to be a certain comp that you pay them and, you know, the, and that depends. So I only get you know, a certain percentage of my average wage back depending on how much I pay someone. Um, other benefits, I can get all my sales tax back that I paid in on all of my qualified property. So if you build a million dollar building, they, in general it's $500,000 worth of materials, that's what the state deems it to be, you can get a $35,000 credit back as soon as you qualify. And if you're in the really big tiers, you can get personal property tax exemptions, but those are for the yahoos and the UPs of the world. Now on to the better credit. That, the uh, Nebraska Advantage LB312 credit, that one's a lot of paperwork. It's worth it, don't get me wrong. It's an audit. Um, the audit's usually worth it at the end too. And you have to be in a certain type of business. So that's the larger credit. The micro enterprise credit is really to anybody. It's a free for all. So as long as I'm setting up a new business um, or I have an existing business and over the next two years I'm gonna put $50,000 into qualified investment 
which isn't a vehicle, so please don't buy some new uh, $50,000 Corvette or whatever it is, but it can't, it can't be a vehicle. But maybe I'm gonna buy new machinery and equipment, or I'm gonna add a person and pay payroll. If I'm gonna invest 55, or 50,000 in either payroll investment over the next two years, I can apply to the state and ask them to give me $10,000 for that. As soon as you make that $50,000 worth of investment, on the tax return that you file individually for the next year, you attach that documentation and you can get up to a $10,000 refundable credit once ever in your lifetime though. So the state will only give you $10,000 worth of free money ever. But it is free money. Um, and if you are doing this in your business, and it's for micro, remember the words micro, so it has to be people with a business five or fewer. When you apply. If I apply on March 1st and by April 2nd, I have 10 employees, it doesn't matter. It's on the date I apply, I have to have five or fewer full-time equivalent employees. So I can have eight part-time employees, I just can't go over my full-time equivalent amount. And you can be doing any type of business you want, a service business, um, anything, as long as you meet that five or fewer requirement. Um, you have to be located in a distressed area, but all of Nebraska basically is considered distressed, but very few small parts. Um, and you have two years to do it. Unfortunately, Nebraska only approves $2 million to this credit program a year. And so once that $2 million has been asked for and used up, you can't get any more. So you have to, it's a first in, so I send my application in, I ask real nicely, they give me my 10,000, the next person who comes in line after that $2 million, they get nothing. So it's first in, first out basis, those who apply first win. And I believe right now there's um, about $800,000 left for the year. So it usually runs out by May, May or June. So you don't have to know that you've done it yet. You just have to think you might want to do it in the next two years. And I'd put my name in the hat to reserve my $10,000. They do not audit you for this credit. They just look at the paperwork you send in. And you don't have to get it back. So if for some reason a year later I fire all my new employees and I get rid of my investment, I still get to keep my 10 grand. It's free money. Pretty much anything but a vehicle. Rents. People buy rental houses. Yeah, I mean, if you buy a rental house, people use this credit. Um, a new dentist that's gonna incorporate in a neighborhood uses this credit. So basically, anybody who's five or less can find a reason to use this credit. You just have to spend 50,000 over two years. It's supposed to be you and basically anybody who's a blood relative, but they can't track it. So technically, if I filed for it, my you know uncle that I haven't spoken to 10 years from now can't ever file for it. But it, they don't track it. Um, they'll never figure it out as long as you don't have the same last name and the same address. So, but it's... The process is, is somewhat simple. I know we, we do a lot of it. We do a lot of them. But yeah, they are somewhat simple. Um, there are some words we avoid using on those applications, but otherwise they're fairly simple. Yes? Does that mean the year you invest the grant? You get two years to do it. So if you apply in 2013, you have 2013 and 2014 to do it. But if I apply today, would it, like, I spend January still count? No. That date of application forward. And there's a, so it's just, is it that zero? Is it, is there a base of a base of what you had last year. Mm -hmm. So the best thing is for somebody starting a new entity because clearly employment was zero. As long as you're going to hire a couple people, you're fine. Um, it's the base year of your investment of the year before versus anything you increase date over date. <coughs> so that one's an easy one. It's probably one of the few we actually like from Nebraska. Um, these are the rural development credits. I'm probably not going to talk about those. Nebraska doesn't give a lot of money away from those. Um, they don't, they define modernization of livestock assets fairly difficult. If I happen to house my, you know, hay baler in there, they're not going to give me the credit. So we try to avoid these and, let, and try and fit us in someplace else because you don't get that much for them. Um, the R&D credit. So if you are receiving a federal research and development credit, Nebraska will allow you to take one on your Nebraska return as well at the entity level. It is, they'll give you up to 15% of the 
a portion. So if you're only doing business in Nebraska, you'll get 15% of your federal credit. If you're doing business in various states, it'll be a portion of that based on what you portion here. Um, it can be, you can basically use this for 20 years after the initial R&D credit is claimed at the federal level. But you have to have a federal credit in order to have a state credit. So if you don't have a federal R&D credit, you're not going to get anything from the state. Um, okay, the angel investment credit. This is somewhat to what you were referring to earlier. If you want people to invest in your business, Nebraska has set up a fund that's only um, $3 million is what they allow these credits. So our microenterprises, they'll give away up to $2 million a year. Nebraska will fund up to $3 million a year with worth of angel investment credits. Basically, what they say is if you invest in a qualified business, which is one with 25 employees or less, and is a certain industry that we'll get to, we will give you 40% of up to a million dollars back for you funding this high technology new business is what they're really looking for. Um, you know, your minimum investment though is 25,000. It says 40% uh, is for distressed areas, but again, most of Nebraska is distressed. So if you can find someone to fund your business, they can get 40% of their monies back. You, as a business though, need to go in and say to the state, I wanna qualify. I wanna be one of these types of businesses so that people can invest in me and get this credit. Now the business doesn't get the credit, your investors do, but you have to qualify as this type of business. Um, you have to have more than 51% of your employees in Nebraska. So they want it to be a Nebraska-based business, 25 or fewer employees at the time, and you have to use proprietary technology. Um, this credit is run by the Department of Economic Development, not the Nebraska Department of Revenue like the two previous credits. So the definition of what is high, uh, qualified high technology is pretty wishy-washy. Um, they want people to use the credit. Right now, there's $1.4 million of the $3 million left for the current year. Um, but the person who's in this business has to go in and say, okay, I want these people to qualify. So these are the industries in which they say people can qualify, but again, you can kind of fit a lot of things in because it's the Department of Economic Development and they're trying to bring new businesses into the area. So the business has to go in and qualify, and then the investor at the end of the day has to qualify. They can be a qualified investor up front, um, which is defined by the amount of W-2 wages they have, et cetera, but at the end of the day, they have to go to the state and say, am I a qualified investor? So you both have to go in and qualify, and then someone has to say, okay, I want 40% of the million dollars I'm going to invest designated to me. And it's a once in a lifetime credit. Um, you know, they'll only, I think they'll only give you up to $350,000 per married couple, so they limit it. But um, you can, but the, you can go in and use this credit for any type of these businesses as long as they're qualified. So if you are one of these small business, in order to attract people to qualify, I would go ahead and Get my application in. Yes. It has to be an equity investment, yes, it does, and it has to be. You have to be in the business for three years, so you have to basically keep your feet in the door for three years, unless the business, for some reason, tanks, which wouldn't be a good answer. But if it does, then it's over, and you still get to keep your money as long as you stay in the business for three years. Um, I mean, getting 40% of your investment back isn't really a bad, and it's and it's refundable on your tax return. So, I mean, if you're getting you know, you owe the government $3,000 and you're getting a $400,000 credit on your Nebraska tax return, they will write you a check for 390, you know, $7,000. Yes. Everything they put in over and above that would, yes. And it can't be somebody who's already a majority owner in this company, so if you want to invest more money, it doesn't work for you. You have to truly be an outside investor coming in or at least be a minority investor. Currently, we've had some clients who have debt that people have loaned them money. Um, we've converted that debt to an equity ownership and maybe set up a new LLC. I mean, there's some tricks to, if I already have debt with a the company, there's some tricks to maybe get them to have equity in a quote unquote new company um, to get the money back. But 40% of whatever you're spending on a business is a big deal to an investor. But again, they're capped at $3 million for the year. There's $1.4 left. Stacy, to your point that it's run by the Department of Economic Development, I mean, have you seen any hesitancy in any case to, to qualify a company? I mean, 
I mean, no. It seems like it's any startup company. It is. You know, it's. Right? I laugh. It's your new and improved on, uh, you know, dish detergent because yeah. I slapped a label on it. It's new and improved, and it's high technology. That's how I feel about how they're treating this credit to date. So even if you don't feel like you're completely in one of these, I mean, food technology, you add a new ingredient, it made it better or healthier or something. Um, so you may not feel like you fit in here, but you would be surprised what they would probably say yes to. The only bad thing, and it's not hugely a problem, but you do have to follow, file some follow-up paperwork for the next few years, why, and the investor does as well, why they have the investment to ensure that they're maintaining it and that the state just didn't give their money away. But it is a nice credit for anybody in these businesses. Um, Nebraska Asset Modernization. This is another one not funded by the Department of Revenue. And so they like to give this money away as well. And they have encouraged people to use it. You're supposed to ask before you buy the asset that you're updating. Um, but if you don't, they've been known to look past that. Basically, they'll give you $30,000 in quote unquote a grant, which means I spend the money and you give me the money back. Um, for manufacturers who have been in Nebraska for five years, two to 200 employees and less than $10 million in assets. You could be you know, adding something new to your manufacturing line. You could be just updating a piece of equipment. Again, there's only $1.5 million out here. People haven't used this credit as much as they'd like to, so they've been pretty lenient in the documentation that they'll accept. And again, you're going through the DED or I think it might even be NIFA or somebody like that, but you're not going through the Department of Revenue and they're a lot more lenient with this credit. Not enough people have taken advantage of it. So they've been, they want to hand this money out. Could you get this credit and one of the other credits? Yeah. Twice? Yeah, because they're coming from two different sources. It's a grant, it's not really a credit. It's a grant, but it's basically $30,000 in cash once you spend the money. there would be no reason probably why they wouldn't. Again, they're pretty lenient because they're not the Department of Revenue. Um, internship grants, this one, we're not quite as lenient. You have to at least be the type of entity that would qualify for 312, even if you don't maybe have the type of investment that you're going to actually apply for the program, but you have to be in those tiers. But it does qualify for administrative management headquarters, um, manufacturers, computer technology people. So, but if you're gonna hire an intern, they just have to be a junior or senior in college. Um, you're gonna have to pay them, a, you know, have to be paid minimum wage, work 200 hours within like a 12 week period. So they're really encouraging people to do this during the summer. You can get up to um, $5,000 back for paying the intern. It's not a difficult application and um, you can do it through the website, but again, you just have to be in one of those qualified type businesses. So if you are using interns, I would encourage you to go ahead and use this program. Are there many distressed areas in the world? It's every place except for like a couple small places in western Nebraska. Almost every place in Nebraska is distressed, surprisingly enough. And that's just based on population census. Our population continues to go down. So we're to, deemed to be uh, distressed census areas. Um, and the customized job, there's two customized job training programs. So if you are training either existing employees on some sort of new technology, new technology can be them learning Excel. Um, so don't think of it as something really high tech or Word. You're sending them, I think it's New Horizons where you send people to learn the, to take these classes um, or an existing job. I mean, it can be more high tech than that. We don't do these applications for people because, I mean, you can look at the top one, you can get $500 to $4,000 per employee and the bottom one, 500 to nine. But it's a, a, com a committee made up of just some random business people and some people from the chamber, and they're pretty lenient. And you file your application, the board meets, and then they deem how much you're gonna get per employee. But it will reimburse you for training programs. And it's not that time intensive. I do. Yep, or you can just call the Omaha Chamber and they'll practically do the application for you. So. <laughs> or your local chamber, or wherever you're from, they'll do the application for you. I mean, they will really help you out with it and it's worth it. And again, it will provide someone with an Excel class. Any questions on the Nebraska before I move to Iowa? Sometimes I tend to talk fast. Okay, on the Iowa side, 
Again, Iowa's a little bit nicer about things. They are not going to complete a full audit for any of these credit programs that they have in place. Um, their first one is their high quality jobs program. This one, you have to pay 130% of the average wage and you're gonna be paying 80% of single family coverage or 50% of family coverage or you're gonna give them an equivalent in their wages for this. So this is a pretty high targeted credit. You have to be paying your employees pretty well and you cannot be a retail or a service business. So they're clearly targeting manufacturing. Um, and this one does require an application at the beginning of the project. Um, they've given out about $300 million worth of these credits in about a four year period, so people do use these credits. Um, but really their only restrictions on them is non-retail, non-service, and obviously paying a very high wage. Um, the incentives, Iowa's more wishy-washy about their credit, so there's not a specific incentive. You're gonna get 10% of your, um, your investment back just like Nebraska. But see, they give you based on the business level of need. So you go in and you talk to their advisors and you come up with the amount that you're gonna get back. And you can get a property tax exemption for up to 20 years. So Nebraska's, or Iowa's property taxes are a lot higher than Nebraska's. So this is a good incentive to bring people over. And they will pay you a refund of some of the sales and use tax on your project, but not the full like Nebraska. But again, you can go in and negotiate how much you're gonna get basically for some of your compensation credits. Iowa's credits are a lot more negotiable than Nebraska's. Um, their Enterprise Zone program, this, I was gonna give a map, but there's 1,100 different Enterprise Zones over 40 counties, and they're not very well connected. So it's a pretty diverse area that can qualify for this Enterprise Zone credit. You can't have the high quality jobs program credit and this credit, they have to be separate. You can be in an Enterprise Zone in Iowa. These, these are a lot, lower credits that you're gonna get, but you also don't have to pay your employees 130% of the average wage and their dental and health benefits. So, but you do have to make a minimum investment of a half million dollars over three years. And you have to have at least 10 new full-time equivalent positions and keep them for at least two years. So they do have some restrictions here. Um, but again, they also tell you you can't relocate, so you can't move from Des Moines to Council Bluffs and thus give you this credit, or move from a non-enterprise zone to an enterprise zone. Yes, sir? So what if it's a, it's, you don't want a start of a project, but with a company that does DOD contracts, there isn't really a start of a project or end of a project, it's, it's an ongoing company. What, well, what they do is, is there a way that you can tell the percentage of completion of that contract? So sometimes they'll walk in and say, okay, let's say I started building my building and I've decided now I want to apply you can go in and determine the percentage of completion of a construction, right? We're 10% complete, so we're gonna get 90% of the investment. It's service-based. Right, Th that's the harder part. Can you denote how much more you're gonna receive from that specific contract before you amend it to have the contract ongoing? So there would have to be something that delineates exactly the amount, or they won't. You know? But again, in Iowa, you can negotiate that a little bit more. Um, let's see. These are the tax incentives that we can receive in the enterprise zones. Uh, property tax for only 10 years versus 20 years if you can qualify for the high credit or the, yeah, their high paying jobs one. And additional uh, training, they'll give you funding for the training and 10% up to five years on your investment. So this one you don't get the wage credits like you do on the high quality jobs. Iowa also has an R&D credit that they'll give you if you're doing R&D over in Iowa. There's a six and a half percent of your qualified R&D. Nebraska's is 15 percent. Um, if, unfortunately, they really want what's actually based in Iowa, so it's a little bit harder to quantify what, unless you're doing all your business in Iowa, what, what is my R&D in Iowa? So sometimes you have to use the simplified method and get down to a lower percentage than the six and a half percent. Iowa's R&D credit's actually not as good. Okay, Iowa has an angel investor tax credit as well. They call it um, the, the uh, Iowa Community Based Seed Fund, but that's their version of the, Iowa, the Nebraska Angel Credit. Theirs is actually, they, they have $2 million to give away a year, we have three. You actually cannot even claim their credit until three years, until you've been in the business for three years. So theirs is a little bit more restrictive and it's non-refundable, so you can only offset tax that you owe. Or in Nebraska, they'll completely give you the monies back. There's only a five year carry forward period. So their credit is actually not as lucrative as Nebraska's. 
um, their new jobs tax credit. If you want to set up a relationship with a vocational college to train employees that eventually will come and work for you and do some, basically I call it like a job sharing program, you can enter in, into this type of agreement and you can get a credit for that relationship up to 10 years carry forward um, based on the taxable wages that you pay your new employee, but it's really only $1,518 is the maximum credit, so it's not a huge credit. It's usually not worth the paperwork. Um, and that's the same for the indi industrial credit, but you have to be in a specific industry. These two aren't very well used in Iowa. Now they're targeted jobs withholding credit. This is a brand new pilot program that they set up and they've only set it up in five cities. So basically what you can do is you can keep a percentage of your wages, yeah, your employees withholding taxes and you divert them to a fund that the city holds and then the city matches that dollar for dollar and you use that to fund a project that you're gonna do in that city. So they're, council, they're doing this in Council Bluffs but they're actually only doing it five cities, Council Bluffs being one of them right now to see how well it works. So you can divert some of your employees withholding taxes. They see no difference on their tax return. If they think they paid in 100 bucks when they file their income tax, they get a credit for 100 bucks. But you've given 3% of that to the city. The city matches those funds. And then you use that to build a project. That's it. Are there any questions? And there's all the legal stuff that basically I didn't give you any advice. You can't rely on any of it. That I just, nothing that I just said can you rely on and actually do anything with. Um, but <laughs> I don't know if you have any additional questions. I think they are going to try and put the PowerPoint out on the Mastercraft website eventually. We're just getting that all set up. So. Okay. Um, there are, I guess, four full-time people in the state and local tax department in our office, um, which is more than anybody else in the state has. Um, we have one manager dedicated literally just to credits and income tax, and then one ma uh, manager dedicated to sales and use tax, and then we have a, uh, one full-time staff person that we use, and then we have three or four that we use intermittently depending on our need. Um, so we are the largest state and local tax department in the state. Um, I have been part of a legislative committee for the last year to help re rewrite the Nebraska Advantage Act, the first program that you saw up there. We really are trying to end picking winners and losers and end then when, you know, Yahoo says, oh, I want to come to your state, what are you going to give me? You know, putting them out there. We're trying to change the program to be encompassing of all businesses and to end the problems that we're seeing during audit so that businesses don't feel like, thank you for the money, but it took you five years to give it to me and you had to look through everything when you came out here. So that's the nicest way I can say it. But that is the legislative committee that we've been working on uh, to be involved in that, to go ahead and change those credits and make them more business and taxpayer friendly to the state. Um, anything else? How far out are those? Are those we have it, we want, we're trying to update it through 2025 this year. Right now it's only extended through 2014. Um, so, you know, really what happens in the legislative process is they look at just the next two years that they have to fund because that's really their budget process. So as long as we get a good fiscal note for the next two years, I don't really see a problem with them funding them out to 2025. Plus, if you look at the data, Nebraska really has pulled in a lot of jobs and a lot of money into the state that I know when you see it in the newspapers, everybody hates the businesses that receive these credits. But, I mean, you can argue that some of these businesses would have been here regardless, but some of them would not. Um, we need to compete with other states, and so I think the legislature understands that. And now that they've ended the, ba the debate on income tax this year, they'll probably start focusing on this again. Yes, sir. The angel credit? Yes. How long has that been in place? If it was in place in 2012, did it run out of money? It did. 2012 is done. That was the first year of it? Yeah, 2011, they started the applications. Yep, 2012 was the first year, and they're done with their money for 2012. Um, so it's 2013 going forward. There is actually a bill in the legislature right now to raise that from $3 million to $5 million, um, so we can have additional investments, but it's currently sitting in committee. Does that tax or the angel program 
renew every year? It does until I believe 2016 or 2017. So it was a very short term time frame. The reason for that is one, they have to have the fiscal note for their budgets. The second is the out of state senators and the Omaha and Lincoln area senators always have an argument over whether or not Western Nebraska is going to benefit from these programs. And so they put it on a short time frame. One, to make sure it gets used. Nobody likes $3 million sitting out there that nobody used. So every year, they really want to make sure it gets used. And two, to ensure that it's not just benefiting Omaha and Lincoln. Do you recall when, how quick or at what point in 2012 the money did you Yes, it was done by March, I believe, because when they passed the bill, they clearly had intentions for who was using it. I mean, nothing gets introduced in the legislature without someone <laughs> wanting to use it. So that one went faster. This year, there's $1.4 million left. But the sooner an application's in, the better. Yes, sir. We call it the Nebraska tax credit. That was $10,000. Is that, is that per entity? Is that per entity? Once in your lifetime. So you can apply for $2,000 from five different businesses if you want. That's no, um, per business. No. It's, oh, it comes back to you individually, so they look at you once in a lifetime individually. So if there's three owners of a business, you know, if, if you know you can get that business up to 150000 maybe each one of them individually can apply for. Technically, it doesn't even have to be the owner of the business. So if you want to reward a manager in your business, they can actually apply for the $10,000. I know, it's kind of crazy. Um, they didn't write that program. They did not think through that credit when they wrote it. They were not very happy about the way we used it. I mean, I got a couple calls. What do you mean a dentist is getting this credit? I'm like, you know, I, I would use it if I could. If I was buying a rental house, I'd be applying for my $10,000. So it's not a very well-written credit, and they're not very fond of it. Right. So, and if you're starting a brand new LLC, clearly there was nothing there before. So, yes, ma'am. Um, for the Nebraska Advantage program and the businesses or industries that are eligible for one of those tiers, you mentioned uh, like a service provider or a business is providing a service to one of those, mm -hmm. 20%. What are the eligible services for that? Program? Pretty much anything, if we can fit you into one of those categories that you're providing services to. So, I guess I'm just thinking of. Um, <coughs> I'd have to think about it. But a lot of times you can fit where you think you might not fit. I will think about that. Any other questions? Yes. Usually actually after someone stumps me, I'm done. But OK, <laughs> I'll take your question. Um, this is on the city side. Do you have any advice for the TIF application process? Um, again, that's an, a little bit of a wishy-washy yeah. um, application. They have really funded a lot more projects, I'm surprised. And they're, um, the, tip the TIF applications and the community development block grants. Um, they've provided a lot more funding for those. Um, so no, they're just pretty, it depends on who's sitting on the board, to be honest with you, the council that it's, is going to approve those and that rotates. And what are those just? Yeah. Tax, it stands for taxes and oh, okay. And the community, yeah. If you're doing a building improvement or a project. Oh, okay. I think the arena in Ralston probably got some of those. You know, I mean, when you're going to put something big in a city, you can go and ask them for monies as well. And the state's provided some funding to those programs. Anything else? Excellent. Thank you for coming and not falling asleep. <laughs> Have a good afternoon. Thank you.